So like I said to you, back to number two. And this is number two, number two, number two. For my grandmother. And me leave. Me leave my grandmother and she been in a little house and something pan the little hill there. And she start off with one room and she get two rooms. And she be down a little kitchen pan and same thing. And did it with her. Still going to school and so, you know? I hope you're school and so. So me just get tired one day, me just get really tired and I said to myself, say, Man, I'm tired for work at school and uh, no money. All the people up on the school bus, them are laugh and a jeer for me and my brother walk. We don't have no money to buy fried chicken and chocolate milk like everybody else. I'm not going to try to find out if it is some money. Not saying it was right, but as a child, you do stupid things, right? So, I go to one of my grandmother's church sisters who own a shop. And I said, good afternoon, good afternoon, ma'am, good morning, ma'am. She said, oh, Oliver, you're so pleasant today. I said, yes, ma'am, um, granny sent me to you. She said, well, your granny sent it, sent it to me for what? What did granny say? So granny said to give me $10, ma'am. And I saw the woman take out the $10 and give it. I mean, my brother, I wait up the road. Run down the road and go down the road. I see the bus I come and I up and pan the bus and I pay for the bus and I go to school. But when I get out of the school now, I don't bother go to school. I go to a restaurant go long and I'm just like I see me out as long and I'm today. And the first me do it, you see. <laughs> so, go to a restaurant and I'm fried chicken, box milk and get to the pit and them, give them, give them, give them, give them, give them what I want to come. I've got to fun, I can't carry nothing home. And then tell me when I could I carry the money and hide the money somewhere. My grandmother wouldn't find it. So I want to make sure so the money done. When I reach home, see my brother a piece of roast plant. You hear my grandmother now? Yeah, your sister go to school the whole week and today you and her now go. And you stay back home. Right? Because she, she have a test for the one. She come home and you have the plant, you know, get her now. So the boy give me a piece of the roast plant and I tell her so I got so full of cherry malt and milk and fry ice cream. I just go on the back of the toilet and dash away. No, I never want to eat because I got full of cherry milk and fried chicken. But the next day come was Saturday morning. Here the woman's daughter come calling, Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Johnson. I say, cock a fat ras no, when the girl come. The girl reached up there and said, Good morning, Miss Johnson. My mom sent me to, to, to collect the bill that Oliver took. So the girl said, the bill that you took, I was there when you come. So Miss Grandmother called me. She said, Olive. Me said, yes, Grandma. She said, come here, child. She said, what kind of bill is this? Me said, Grandma, I don't have an idea about any bill. I didn't take any money. I didn't take anything, ma'am. And I don't know. And I don't know. And the woman grabbed me, see? And the woman started to lash my skin properly. The woman start to beat the living black off of my natural skin, you know. And I ball and squeal for my mama. And I go to the front of the bathroom to grab my one frock. I have one frock and call it goat color frock. She make it with two color long like two goat ears. I hit me the half. And the pink bottom and white top with a big goat color ears like two goat, goat, goat ears. Hang down all the way to my gut. And then the color reach. Two goat color. And I hit and I said, the woman grabbed me as I come out to the frack and palm me to the club and beat him in the worst way, you know. And I decide, I'm not going to take it no more, I'm going to throw this woman off at me. And when I dash the woman and say, Ray Gully for your granny, in a banana walk, she hold on for me, me and I each up in the banana walk. The woman kindly pull herself on the banana walk and start to beat the living hell out of me, you know. I said, the woman beat me like it's no tomorrow. My eyes swell up, I have a black eye, I can't walk good. The whole of me look like me crippled up, part of me burn up with hot water. The whole of me was fucked up because after me done get the beating, she said, I go boil the water for her and tell me if I knock on the door when I pull the water in the cup. I fold them, you know, them big inner mail mug full of hot water, you know. And I go knock on the window like a fucking it and she fly the window open. So the mug go right in my chest and the whole hot water burn me. When my sister come and see me and put Vaseline for me, she said, no, brother, you're not going here to stay. You're not going here to stay. If you go home to your mama, you're not going to Cantania. Granny, you shouldn't beat her, so she's in a bad condition. You hear me? 
I mean, it just did go and church, go and testify a couple of nights before. And I said, shall we praise the Lord when the pastor asks if anyone wants to testify? Because I thought that God would have helped me out of the situation. But my granny beat the living hell out of me. And I saw, when my mother come and see my ribs bone and see me, she said, no, what? I can't have you to my daughter, so I go and take my picnic for you. And I saw my mother carry me home. When my mama carried me home, my mama house me there with two little small room. I see a whole bunch of people, and, but I never know my brother and sister, none of them. I never really know if I tell the truth. I did not know. I did not have a clue. I see one little girl did it. So I saw a little girl, and she said, no, that's a little boy, a little brother. I saw that big old rustic man was there also. You understand me? And them supposed to be a bigger brother. Them bully me. Some of them bully me. One of them arc and spit in my face. Then tell me, say me ugly, and I would never be nobody. And the first day when I come home, that was a disaster. It was a terrible disaster for me. Because I never know people could have wicked like them there. I suffer as a young girl, me tell you. And I tell you, when you see I come home, one of my big brother called me one morning. And I remember nobody was there. And he said, come here and he call me. And he hold me by me and then drag me into the room and put me down on my belly. I never forgot that man, you know, that man forced himself into me. And that time I just going about nine to ten years old. Ten years old because I never had a bobby or chest yet. About ten years old. And my big brother forced him big old penis on me and raped me. And when he raped me, he come back and he raped me again. He slapped me down. He put me in one sitting there, where, 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 where we call a closet. We have one big one in called wardrobe. He locked me in there, in the dark like jail. Locked me up in there. And from that time, my life started to become different. Me, you understand me? I started to become a different kind of person from that time. I realized my mother worked so hard to plant the food. Then for care of market, go sell. I drop on her sick foot and this big old man sit down instead of they help the woman. They walk all about and smoke ganja and pick up woman and this big old rustic man come take him body and rape me one rape me one sister. I would have no lack nor part with that man as long as I live. And I'm in Jamaica, but fame time will come. And then go back and rape another one and rape another one and molest all of him fucking sister them. You're a dog shit piece of low life. Let me tell you something, I'm not ashamed of what happened to me, can't even make it happen to me. One woman cussed me out of you, think I've been the last man, tell me, go away, your brother, fuck you. Because she thinks she can't get satisfaction for that. I was only a child, and it only made me stronger. It only made me stronger. You hear me? Only made me stronger.